You Come must not make certain mistakes. I just told you. Not Our itinerary. hood is a part of no return. All we do when we decide is change that we are waiting. It is forever. Have you heard about Ibrahim Traore's recent interview that challenged the entire West? Ibrahim Traore displayed his harsh stance towards the West, and the West has been left with no response. When asked if Burkina Faso could achieve anything without the West, Ibrahim Traore replied that Burkina Faso could only make progress without the West, as it would only lead to exploitation. Not just that, he revealed enough to make nations like France and the U.S. wary of messing with Burkina Faso. But what future does he aim to achieve? Let's find out. Ibrahim Traore gave an interview in which he shared things he had never done before. The interview became the talk of the town, as it shared ideas never heard out of Ibrahim Traor's mouth. He talked about Burkina Faso's future like no leader of Burkina Faso ever did. So, what is the focus of Captain Traor's recent interview regarding Burkina Faso's path to sovereignty and plans? Captain Traor's recent interview primarily focuses on Burkina Faso's pursuit of sovereignty and outlines the nation's plans. Throughout the discussion, the president emphasizes the importance of breaking free from historical constraints and achieving self-sufficiency. Captain Traor emphasizes the commitment to independence and sovereignty, ensuring that decisions are in the nation's best interest. The interview highlights key aspects such as Burkina Faso's stance on international relations, the ongoing fight against terrorism, economic independence, and the president's vision for the country's future. Captain Traora provides insights into the proactive measures taken against terrorism, efforts to attain economic self-sufficiency, and upcoming electoral reform, all contributing to Burkina Faso's journey toward a more independent and sovereign state. Things may still surprise you. It's not just the currency. Everything that is linked, which keeps us in slavery. And how exactly does Captain Traor emphasize the importance of sovereignty in Burkina Faso's decision-making process regarding international relations? Captain Traor highlights the paramount importance of sovereignty in Burkina Faso's decision-making process regarding international relations. Throughout the interview, he articulates the nation's commitment to making decisions that align with its best interests. Captain Traor discusses ongoing relationships with key partners such as Francie, the European Union, and the United States. The president highlights the significance of mutual respect and ideological alignment in these partnerships, emphasizing that cooperation will continue as long as it respects Burkina Faso's sovereignty and the nation's unwavering desire for independence. This emphasis on sovereignty reflects a strategic and moral approach to shaping international alliances and interactions ensuring that Burkina Faso's autonomy remains a central tenet of its diplomatic engagements. But have these nations been responsible for making Burkina Faso compromise its sovereignty? Here's a reminder to please like and share the video and subscribe to our channel to watch more videos on black culture, history, civilization, and identity. Let's continue now. France's historical exploitation and control over Burkina Faso have left a lasting impact on the West African nation. France's economic influence, particularly through the CFA franc currency, has been contentious. The currency utilized in former French colonies, including Burkina Faso, has been criticized as a remnant of colonialism. Experts argue that it hampers economic development and limits the policy autonomy of these nations, perpetuating a cycle of dependency on the former colonial power. In addition to economic control, France has been implicated in supporting military coups in African countries, a phenomenon notably observed in former French colonies like Burkina Faso. This interference has further fueled discontent among the Burkinabe people. Recent movements within Burkina Faso have emerged as a response to French exploitation, advocating for an end to cooperation agreements and even demanding the departure of the French ambassador. These protests highlight a growing sentiment of resistance against the perceived neo-colonial influence exerted by France. The struggle for autonomy in Burkina Faso is deeply intertwined with its history of military coups and insurgencies. This narrative sheds light on the country's vulnerability. 
This vulnerability is partly attributed to its colonial past under French rule, which has left a complex legacy of instability. The ongoing challenges faced by Burkina Faso in maintaining political stability and economic progress are, in part, rooted in the historical dynamics shaped during the colonial era. So, what does the president have to say about it? What key points about Burkina Faso's ongoing relationships with France, the European Union, and the United States are discussed? In the interview, Captain Traor provides insights into Burkina Faso's ongoing relationships with key international partners, namely France, the European Union, and the United States. The president emphasizes the importance of mutual respect and ideological alignment in these diplomatic ties. Burkina Faso's commitment to sovereignty is a recurring theme. Captain Traore clarifies that cooperation with these nations continues only if it respects the nation's autonomy and desire for independence. The stability and well-being of Burkina Faso's population are fundamental humanitarian considerations. Ongoing conflicts and instability can lead to humanitarian crises, affecting the lives of ordinary citizens. A commitment to protecting human rights and ensuring the population's welfare is a shared global responsibility. Burkina Faso's stability is crucial for regional and global security. The presence of armed groups and the potential for further destabilization can have spillover effects, contributing to regional conflicts and fostering conditions conducive to terrorism. This instability may pose security threats that extend beyond Burkina Faso's borders, impacting neighboring countries and potentially reaching Europe and the United States. Burkina Faso's stability is connected to economic interests, not only for the country itself but also for international partners. A stable Burkina Faso is more likely to attract foreign investment and engage in mutually beneficial economic partnerships. Instability, conversely, can disrupt trade, jeopardizing the economic interests of both African and international stakeholders. Political instability and insecurity in Burkina Faso can contribute to mass migrations, with people fleeing violence and seeking refuge elsewhere. This can strain neighboring countries and potentially lead to a flow of refugees to Europe and the United States. Addressing the root causes of instability in Burkina Faso is essential to managing migration challenges. Upholding Burkina Faso's sovereignty aligns with principles of international law and diplomacy. Respect for the sovereignty of nations is a cornerstone of international relations, and supporting Burkina Faso's self-determination fosters positive diplomatic relationships between these countries and the international community. Western nations should respect Burkina Faso's sovereignty, otherwise no partnership is possible. But one thing that gives Western nations a reason to make a military base in Burkina Faso is terrorism. So, how is Burkina Faso addressing the long-standing issue of terrorism? And what insights does Captain Traore share about the country's proactive approach? The sister republic of Niger and Mali are at war against terrorism. And in Burkina Faso, almost a decade, we are at war. Captain Traore sheds light on Burkina Faso's proactive approach to addressing the persistent issue of terrorism in a recent interview. He reveals that the country has shifted to an offensive stance, actively seeking and confronting terrorist threats. The president underscores the importance of the Voluntary Defense People VDP, and acknowledges the significance of logistical support from allies in this anti-terrorism effort. The insights provided by Captain Trauer indicate a decisive shift in Burkina Faso's strategy, moving from a defensive posture to actively engaging and combating terrorism. The mention of the VDP implies the civilian population's involvement in the defense efforts, showcasing a collective approach to national security. Additionally, the acknowledgement of allies' logistical support highlights the collaborative nature of Burkina Faso's fight against terrorism, signaling a coordinated effort with international partners to effectively counter the threats posed by terrorist elements within the country. What role does the Voluntary Defense People VDP play in Burkina Faso's fight against terrorism, and how does the country receive logistical support from its allies? In the interview, Captain Traor highlights the pivotal role of the Voluntary Defense People VDP in Burkina Faso's fight against terrorism. The president highlights the VDP's proactive involvement, indicating they actively seek and confront terrorist threats. This reveals a shift from a defensive to an offensive strategy, with the civilian population playing a crucial role in the country's security measures. 
The VDP's active engagement reflects a collective approach, demonstrating a unified front against terrorism. Additionally, Captain Traore acknowledges the importance of logistical support from allies in Burkina Faso's anti-terrorism efforts. While specific details about the nature of this support are not provided, the mention suggests that the country is collaborating with international partners to bolster its counter-terrorism capabilities. This logistical support implies a coordinated effort, indicating that Burkina Faso is not facing the challenge of terrorism in isolation, but as part of a broader alliance with allies contributing resources and expertise to strengthen the nation's ability to confront and combat terrorist threats effectively. Burkina Faso is facing other issues, including economic self-sufficiency. So, what is Captain Traore's stance on achieving economic independence and self-sufficiency, particularly regarding food production? Burkina Faso is actively pursuing economic independence through a multifaceted approach encompassing diversification, reduced reliance on external financing, and stimulating private sector growth. The nation strategically bolsters its agricultural, forestry, and pastoral sectors collectively contributing 22% to the GDP and engaging nearly 80% of the workforce. This emphasis on sectoral development aligns with the broader goal of fostering economic resilience and reducing dependence on external sources. In tandem with this sectoral focus, Burkina Faso is implementing measures to diminish its dependence on external financing. The country is channeling efforts into domestic borrowing to finance its budget deficit projecting a reduction to 5.2% of GDP in 2024. Moreover, initiatives to improve the business climate are underway to stimulate private sector growth and decrease reliance on government support. Despite these commendable efforts, Burkina Faso confronts formidable challenges on its path to economic independence, socio-political instability, military coups, a challenging security environment, and the impacts of climate change pose significant hurdles. The nation has grappled with terrorist attacks, leading to population displacements and humanitarian crises, reflected in its low ranking of 184th out of 191 countries in the 2021-2022 Human Development Index HDI report by the United Nations Development Program, UNDP. Undeterred by these challenges, Burkina Faso remains committed to environmental sustainability the country aims to reduce greenhouse gas emissions by 29.4% by 2030 and seeks to mobilize additional resources through innovative green financial instruments, including green bonds. Recognizing the intrinsic value of its natural capital, estimated at $50.8 billion in 2018, Burkina Faso strives to exploit these resources sustainably, emphasizing its dedication to a resilient and self-sufficient economic future. We showed everywhere that Africans are dying of hunger and thirst and so on. Projects invented year and day, for example, providing drinking water. There is a large reserve of underground water in the AES. How does Burkina Faso plan to reduce its dependency on imports and encourage the cultivation of its resources for economic growth? In the interview, Captain Trior outlines Burkina Faso's strategy to reduce dependency on imports and promote the cultivation of its resources for economic growth. He emphasizes the significance of achieving self-sufficiency, particularly in food production. Captain Traore's remarks suggest a commitment to fostering economic independence through targeted policies and programs. The president implies that Burkina Faso is actively engaged in efforts to encourage the population to contribute to the country's economic growth by cultivating local resources. This may involve the implementation of policies that incentivize and support agricultural practices, as well as initiatives aimed at diversifying and boosting domestic industries. The broader objective is to create an environment where the nation becomes less reliant on external imports and more focused on harnessing its resources to meet economic needs, reinforcing its autonomy and resilience. Now let's talk about the recent topic that has gone viral, the electoral process. What reforms does Captain Traor hint at regarding the electoral process? And how does he envision politicians presenting their programs to the public? During the interview, Captain Traor hints at upcoming reforms in the electoral process, specifically mentioning changes that aim to create a model where politicians present 
their programs rather than resorting to buying votes. The president's emphasis suggests a commitment to enhancing the transparency and integrity of the electoral system. The envisioned reforms prioritize shifting towards a more issue-centric and program-based approach in political campaigns. Captain Trauer suggests that politicians should focus on presenting their programs and policies to the public, emphasizing a move away from potentially corrupt practices such as vote buying. This hints at a desire for a more democratic and informed electorate, where citizens can make decisions based on the merit of political agendas rather than external influences. The anticipated reforms emphasize Burkina Faso's commitment to democratic principles and fair electoral practices in shaping the nation's political landscape. When questioned about the duration of the transition and the potential for elections in Burkina Faso, what is the president's primary focus? When questioned about the duration of the transition and the potential for elections in Burkina Faso, Captain Traore maintains that his primary focus is on the people's well-being. The president's response suggests prioritizing the population's welfare over specific timelines or political processes. Captain Traore's emphasis on the well-being of the people signals a commitment to ensuring stability, security, and the overall welfare of Burkina Faso citizens during the transitional period. This focus indicates a careful and measured approach where the president prioritizes creating favorable conditions for the population before proceeding with electoral processes. It aligns with the broader theme of the interview, where Captain Trauer consistently emphasizes the importance of independence, security, and economic self-sufficiency to benefit the Burkina Faso population. And what does he have to say about young people? How does Captain Trauer express his commitment to raising awareness among young people and safeguarding them against manipulation in the political landscape of Burkina Faso? Captain Trauer expresses his commitment to raising awareness among young people and safeguarding them against manipulation in the political landscape of Burkina Faso. In the interview, he acknowledges the importance of ensuring the youth remain vigilant against manipulation. The president hints at upcoming reforms in the electoral process, aiming to create a model where politicians present their programs instead of resorting to buying votes. This commitment to raising awareness highlights Captain Traore's recognition of the younger generation's role in shaping Burkina Faso's future. He signals a desire for a more informed and discerning youth electorate by proposing electoral reform. The focus on preventing manipulation suggests a dedication to creating a political environment that empowers young people to make decisions based on the merit of political programs rather than succumbing to external pressures. Captain Trauer's approach aligns with a vision for a politically aware and active youth population, contributing positively to the nation's democratic processes. Summing this up from the interview, what do experts say about the future of Burkina Faso? Under Traore rule, what future awaits Burkina Faso? Captain Ibrahim Traore has emerged as a steadfast statesman, steering the nation toward a future of security, economic prosperity, transparent governance, and social harmony. Grounded in a rich and impressive journey, Traore's vision is encapsulated in ambitious goals that aim to address critical challenges and capitalize on growth opportunities. Traoré's administration places security at the forefront of its agenda, recognizing the urgent need to combat terrorism and insecurity. Going beyond mere rhetoric, he advocates for a holistic and comprehensive security approach. This involves strengthening national security forces, fostering enhanced regional cooperation, and bolstering intelligence capabilities. By addressing security challenges collectively, Traoré seeks to create a resilient and secure environment for Burkina Faso and its citizens. Economic development takes center stage in Traoré's vision for Burkina Faso. His strategy involves strategic investments in key sectors, including agriculture, industry, infrastructure, and education. By doing so, Traoré aims to catalyze economic growth, create job opportunities, and improve the population's living conditions. The multifaceted approach not only addresses immediate economic concerns, but also lays the groundwork for sustained development in the long run. Traoré is committed to promoting transparency, accountability, and good governance, acknowledging the importance of governance in nation building. His vision includes strengthening democratic institutions, combating corruption, and ensuring the active participation of civil society in decision-making processes. By doing so, 
Traoré aims to build a governance framework that reflects the aspirations and needs of the Burkinabi people. Recognizing the pivotal role of education and healthcare in human development, Traoré plans significant investments in these sectors. The goal is to ensure equitable access to quality education and healthcare services for all Burkinabes, addressing fundamental pillars of societal well-being. Traoré's commitment to these essential areas reflects a holistic understanding of development beyond economic indicators. Traoré highlights the significance of national unity as a cornerstone of Burkina Faso's progress. Fulfilling dialogue, mutual respect, and tolerance in a country characterized by diverse ethnicities, religious groups, and regions becomes paramount. Traoré's approach aims to bring together these disparate elements, creating a cohesive and harmonious nation. He envisions a Burkina Faso through inclusivity, where diversity becomes a source of strength rather than division. As Burkina Faso navigates through these transformative goals, under the leadership of Captain Ibrahim Traoré, the global community observes with keen interest. The strategic initiatives and policies set forth by Traoré have garnered attention, with the potential to reshape the nation's course. Traoré's commitment to these key goals positions Burkina Faso toward a brighter, more inclusive, and sustainable future. And will the future be influenced by Western powers? A notable aspect of charting the course for Burkina Faso's future under Captain Ibrahim Traoré's leadership is the emphasis on achieving these goals without undue influence from Western powers. Traoré envisions a self-determined and sovereign trajectory for Burkina Faso, rooted in the nation's aspirations and guided by the principles of autonomy and independence. While acknowledging the importance of international cooperation in addressing security challenges, Traoré is keen to ensure that Burkina Faso's security agenda remains primarily driven by internal considerations. By maintaining autonomy in security decisions, the nation seeks to tailor its responses to its unique challenges without being unduly influenced by external agendas or interests. In economic development, Traoré's vision is centered on empowering Burkina Faso economically, focusing on reducing reliance on external actors. Strategic investments in agriculture, industry, infrastructure, and education are geared toward fostering self-sufficiency and reducing dependence on external economic forces. This approach aims to strengthen the nation's economy and make it resilient to external fluctuations. Traoré's commitment to transparent governance aligns with the aim of ensuring that Burkina Faso's democratic institutions remain robust and free from external pressures. By promoting accountability and combating corruption, the administration seeks to fortify the foundations of governance, allowing the nation to shape its political landscape without undue interference. In the crucial education and healthcare sectors, Traoré's plan involves substantial investments focusing on autonomy. By prioritizing these fundamental pillars of human development, Burkina Faso aims to provide quality services without being swayed by external aid conditions. This approach underscores the nation's commitment to determining its developmental path. The emphasis on national unity is an internal objective and a shield against external divides. Traoré recognizes that a united Burkina Faso is better equipped to navigate global complexities without succumbing to external pressures that may seek to exploit internal divisions. Fostering dialogue and tolerance internally becomes a strategic asset in maintaining national sovereignty. As Burkina Faso progresses towards a future envisioned by Captain Ibrahim Traoré, the commitment to achieving these transformative goals without succumbing to the influence of Western powers highlights the nation's pursuit of an independent and self-reliant path. It signals a determination to carve out a future that reflects Burkina Faso's unique identity and aspirations, free from external impositions. Do you think success will be possible alone? Or do you believe the success of any African nations will be, in fact, possible alone? In the comment section, let us know what future you see Burkina Faso attaining. Do you want to watch more videos like this one? If yes, subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon next to it. We have decided to bring videos on something nobody talks about. The black culture, civilization, history, and evidence about how glorious blacks have been. Thanks for watching. And until the next video, stay tuned. Deposit photos music.